Hi everyone, it was a question that came up on the TradingView Facebook page and I just thought I'd create a quick video to show you how you can use the MACD um, to look for stocks that might be starting to um, begin an upward run. Um, you can obviously find stocks that have been running for a while, but it's always good to try and find stocks where they might be about to turn around and um, you know see what the strength of that turnaround is. And the MACD is one of those you know great universal indicators that you know you can look at and you can sort of see the strength of a um, a movement and you can see the direction and the momentum, the duration. You know, there's a whole bunch of different ways to use the MACD, but um, what I wanted to do in this video is not so much you know explain the MACD in detail. You know that's up to you. You can go and you know, research that on lots of other videos on the website, um, on the TradingView, you know, tutorial sections and um, educational areas. But um, a good way of doing this is to find stocks that are literally about to start that um, upward momentum that, you know, people who like to use the MACD, you know, look for. So um, what I can show you here is, you know, this is just a, a chart page. There's nothing else on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the MACD indicator, M-A-C-D. And it's just personal habit, but what I like to do is, you know, I've got, got this idea in my head that green is good, red is bad. And so what I'll do is I'll double click on um, the MACD indicator here. You can see how you can change the length of your fast moving line, your slow moving line. Um, I tend just to, you know, leave it at the defaults. And what I'll do is I'll go to style and I'm going to change the MACD, which is the line that we're looking for. I'm going to make him green. So green is good. And what I'll do is I'll make it a little bit bolder so we can see it. And I'm going to change my signal line. You can think of that as my base, but I'll change my signal line, which is a slow moving average, to a, um, uh, a red line. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for when does the red line, or so when does the green line break above the red line? Is that going to give me a bit of a signal that there's some um, bullish momentum coming through on this particular stock? And see, uh, you know, conversely, you can say, well, you know, when it crosses below, that could be a good time to short the stock. And it sort of tries to give you a bit of an indication of when you should enter and exit it's obviously a lagging indicator, so you can fiddle with those two moving average links. Um, but again, you know, we're just trying to sort of identify, you know, not not for this particular video, not so much, you know, how to use the MACD, but how to find um, opportunities where you can see it's just doing, you know, starting to do this crossover here. So anyway, we've got our chart, we've got our MACD indicator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the stock screener, and so you know, little tab down the bottom. And I've got my US stock selected, selected US stock selected. I'm on my one day interval and I've got 10,000 stocks, which is just way too many to go through. So that's, you know, it's a crazy number of stocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove some of these columns just so it's a little bit easier to see. Get rid of that one. Really performance I'll keep. I'll get, rid of, um, I'll get rid of monthly. I'll get rid of weekly. You know, when you open this up, you'll have a whole bunch of columns that, you know, you may or may not want to keep. Remove that one, remove that one, get rid of, well, I might keep relative volume, just something to do, get rid of pre-market. And so now what I want to do is I've got these 10,000 stocks and I'm just looking for stocks where the MACD has literally in the last day crossed above its signal line. The, so the fast moving average, which is the green one, has crossed above the slow moving average, which is the red one, which is, you know, a, a bit of a bullish signal. So I'm going to add the MACD column. So you can add two different types of MACD. You can either add the level or the signal. I'm just going to add the level. You could do it either way. And what I'm going to do here, this is this is where it gets a bit clever. So I've got 10,000 matches. That's all the stocks that I can buy through the US stock market. And I'm going to go and select crossing up. And this is the important thing to select. And when you select that, it looks like the value here is grayed out and you're meant to enter a you know, value in here. But what I actually want to do is I want to scroll down and select MACD signal. And I'm going to close that. You see, I've got 159 matches. And so I'm going to filter this down a little bit further. I want to filter it down a bit more. So I'm going to say, only show me um, stocks. Well, you know, if I click on this first one, just to show you. So you can see if I zoom right in here, See how it's just crossed over there. It's a bit hard to see, but you know I can see that the green is slightly above. I can maximize that. See how the green line has just that, literally that last um, day has crossed over. So you can see that it's crossed, and that's what this filter here is doing for me. So it's finding all those stocks where they're literally just at the start of their crossover period. So I'll shrink this back down. Let's scroll out a bit. 
Now, what I want to do here is I want to say, um, show me stocks where the price is, let's say, at least above, I don't know, a dollar, because it'll get rid of some of my little pennies that you know sort of bounce around a bit. So it's only taking me down to 149. I'm going to say, show me stocks where last night they had a bit more of a significant move. So they had at least a 2% move up. And so that's taking me down to 45. So that's starting to look promising. And what I might do is I might say, show me stocks where their yearly performance has been, I don't know, at least 50%. So let's have a look at that and see how many results. I'm down to seven, so that might have been too much. So I might say, show me where they've down 20%. So I've got 15. Show me the yearly performance is about 10%. So I'm now down to 17. So, you know, again, we've had quite a few pullbacks and things over the last year. Um, and last night was particularly bad. Like I think the Dow and the NASDAQ, you know, lost between, you know, 1% and 2% each. So, you know, it was a bit of a, you know, tumultuous night. And I might say, show me stocks with a three-month performance. Mm, has a bit of momentum. So let's try 50 for those. So I'm down to 6. Let's try 30. Down to 10. Let's try 20. So down to 12. So I'm basically saying, show me stocks where they're up. You know, they've, they've got some sort of upward movement over the year. Um, you know, the three-month performance is saying they're up. Um, relative volume is a good one. It basically says, show me stocks where there's um, unusual volume coming through. So I change it to two, so I'm down to seven. And so what I might start to do is go through some of these and see if there's any that I'd like to shortlist. So um, this one here, it's not sort of showing any sort of strong signs of pulling away. It's sort of been a bit flat across the top. You could argue it's had a bit of a breakout. Now, if that's a resistance area through there, I'll turn on my little tool and I can say, well, let's say from there to there, oop, turn him on. So from there to there, you know, it was having trouble getting above that, you know, this sort of, you know, this sort of um, horizontal support resistance type line. But, you know, it does look now it's come above, it's come back, it's tested it, now it's broken above. And I like that it's past earnings. So this is probably a stock that I'd keep an eye on. Um, what I'd like to do though is I'll turn on volume because, you know, I should always have volume on. Um, volume. So you can see here that there was quite a lot of volume, but, you know, the market was a particularly difficult market last night. So um, I won't read too much into that. But, you know, what I might do is I'll open up my um, uh, lists and I'm going to create a new list. I'm just going to call it um, MACD crossovers. Click save. And so I might add him into the list. So I'll just right click and go um, add to watch list. So then I can see that he's there. And you know, tonight when the market opens, I'll keep a bit of an eye on him. So you know, if he if he looks like he's going to start to run, great. Um, but not not one I'm terribly excited about, about, but I'll certainly keep an eye on it. Um, this one here. So again, you know, quite a strong move. You can see that you know he's had a big run up here, he's had a big pullback. And he looks like he's running again, but you know, there's quite strong volatile movements each day. You know, there was obviously you know a good amount of green bullish volume yesterday. You can see that the candle, the the MACD, um, is sloping up fairly steeply, so that's a sort of sign that I quite like. You know, it shows there might be a bit of momentum in that stock. Um, if I have a look at where it got to um, up around that four dollar mark, you can see it's sort of hit that twice now. Let's put my little uh, resistance line up here. And I can then use this tool here to say, well, if he's here right now, how much of a gain is that? So you can see there's, you know, roughly 10% in it to get back to, you know, that previous high. So, you know, short-term trader could be worth keeping an eye on. I'd probably have a stop loss, you know, somewhere around this $3 mark and, um, you know, keep a close eye on it and, you know, see if it does run. Um, but not, not terribly excited by it, but I might bookmark it. Just in case, I go add uh, to watch list. Um, the next one, BSVN. Again, you know, sort of been pretty flat through here, hasn't done much. Let's put our little resistance line. And it's all, it's resistance is, you know, it's important to note that it's an area. It's not like a um, an individual line necessarily, but it's more of a, um, it's more of an area. I've got some of these sort of pre-configured just so I, you know, can say it's a support and resistance line. Um, support becomes resistance and vice versa. If I zoom in a bit, there's been some really good volume over the last few days. Um, it has sort of broken above. It went up quite high. It's pulled all the way back. Um, let's see what that move was. So again, I'll put my little line up here. Should turn this little magnet on so it snaps to it, which would be good. 
So that's now snapped to that. And I'm going to see how much was the move from here up to there. So, you know, there's sort of 7% to get back to that high. But again, with this one, I'll probably wait to see what it does tonight or, you know, next next day of trading, see if it goes up. But it might also come back and retest this line. Like sometimes it likes to, you know, prices like to test, you know, the previous sort of support level, you know, around that $17 before it, you know, starts to make another big move. But I like the volume. I like that it started across. Let's have a look at Burl. Again, big sort of gap up on earnings. So, um, you know, it's been sort of relatively steady, and you know we know that because of you know it's this this column here that sort of indicates it's up, you know, thirty percent over the year, thirty percent over the last three months. So it's obviously had a decent run through here. Nice sort of gap on earnings. I'd probably want to, you know, gaps often get filled. So um, it was an eleven percent gain last night. So I'd probably expect this one maybe to come back down a little bit, depending on what the news was, but. And again, it's one that I might keep an eye on. I could certainly add it to my watch list off to the right. This one here, massive gap up. So again, I probably wouldn't touch this one. It's very hard for you to see, but that's where the price is up here around that 37.93 mark. Um, so he's had a you know, quite significant run. Um, what's it done? Snap to it. So it's, you know, it's got like a you know 40% difference you know ran 78 percent last night so again that's probably not one that i'd want to chase lng again good volume good move up you can see it's crossed over here so um you know again it's sort of doing this thing where it sort of goes up pulls back up pulls back up pulls back up pulls back up and so that's probably you know the ones that we've looked at so far i'd be you know a bit more interested in that one don't know what it does scroll down Engages in liquefied natural gas, LNG-related business, owns and operates LNG terminals, develops, constructs. You can see that based on the technicals, it's a strong buy. Um, you know, if I open up this, it's just an average of all these oscillators and moving averages. So it just helps me from a you know technical point of view to say, you know, this is probably a stock that you know I quite like the look of. You know, so this is definitely one that I'd add and um, keep a bit of an eye on. So add to watch list. And then the last and Final one is RM&I. So again, you know, it's had earnings. So I like that it's passed its earnings period. It's had a nice move up. I like that it's a fairly distinct, sharp move through there. Um, again, it's not a stock that I know what it does. I can shut this down now so I can have a bit better look at it. So you can see it's a nice sort of sharp move through there. You know, it's a very clear move. You know, so maybe it's doing something similar to back here where it's, you know, going to go on its next leg. You know, it's been up. It's had a pullback hit its earnings it's moved up quite nicely i don't know what it does so let's go and have a look engage the provision of enterprise software support products and services offers global tax legal and regulatory update security support proactive support so it looks interesting you know it's um it's moved last night was 16 percent, so that might be a little bit high um maybe a buy somewhere around this nine dollar 75 mark in case it pulls back a bit um, you know, could be worth having a look at. But again, it's a stock that I, I do like to look at, so I'll add it to my watch list. Um, you can see that I've added it here. So without going, you know, there's lots of different ways you can use the MACD. You can use these bars below. Um, but it just sort of gives you a bit of an idea and helps sort of put the odds in your favour. You know, when the two moving averages are starting to move apart, you know, and, and the wider they move, the sort of more momentum, I guess. But, you know, it's just a, an easy way to visualise um, you know, what a stock might be doing, what the strength of the move might be. Again, I think that was probably a fairly aggressive move, um, again, after earnings, but I'd kind of like to see it, you know, maybe around this, I don't know, $9.70, $9.80 type price if I was going to try and buy into it um, and then just make sure it moved up from there once I bought in. But, you know, the LNG one, you know, it hasn't had such a violent move. And so, you know, again, that's one I probably like the look of at this stage. So we shall see over the next few days how they play out. And as I said, it's just, you know, you can never get these things 100% right every time. But if you use some of these tools, you can get into your favor. And you can see how simple it was with the stock screener to identify these ones, you know, especially in a market that, you know, was punished so heavily last night. Um, you know, if, if the market was, you know, had been up 1% or 2%, you might expect to see 20 results. Um, but this is, you know, again, you can see on the rating, they're all strong buys. So this is just a nice, easy way to, you know, if you like MACD crossovers, it's just a nice, easy way to identify which stocks have got a bit of momentum. Um, you could go the other way and you can say, you know, get rid of some of these filters and, you know, really look for stocks that have perhaps been oversold over the last 12 months. 
you know, I like to keep that relative volume on. You can see there's 14. Let's go yearly performance support search by the ones that have been probably doing a bit tough lately. So this one's, you can see it's been in a gradual decline. You know, it's moved up a little bit there. It's not one that I'd probably want to pursue. I like stocks that are, you know, heading up for, you know, for the obvious reasons. Again, nothing happening on that one particularly interesting. Too little volume, but look at that one. That one there could be interesting. So how he got filtered out because his yearly performance was down, but you can see his last three month performance was quite good. It looks like a good volume. Let me shrink that down. It looks like the crossover is happening. You know, you can probably throw in something like a linear regression. Um, linear, linear regression tool. See where he is in his trend. So, you know, that one, again, I think he's probably a little bit expensive at this stage, but, um, you know, good sort of volume coming through. Again, he'd probably be one that I'd try and buy closer to maybe that $3.70 tight mark, you know, somewhere back around here. Um, yeah, he does seem to be going up, pulling back, going up, pulling back, going up, pulling back, going up. So I'd expect a little pullback. And then maybe there's a little bit of upside, you know, as he's ratcheting his way back up. Um, that's interesting. So it's sometimes good to zoom out, as I've just done. You can see that, you know, the stock was up around there before, you know, had some big spectacular collapse um, back in March. So he's still recovering from that. So this one could be interesting. So he got smashed in the last 2020 COVID crisis. It's obviously petroleum, oil and gas. So again, he could be interesting. So he's got you know quite a good upside um, if he does continue to move up. So let's just have a where he is now. And if he got up to say there, that's you know basically 30% in it. But you know it used to be at crazy highs. So let's pretend he one day got back up to, you know, those sort of more extreme levels. So if he got back up to here, that's 100%. If he got back up to, you know, back up to this level here, that's 162. Back up to this extreme level here, it's 200% in it. But, you know, I don't expect it'll get back up there, but maybe somewhere around there, you know, it would be not unfair over the next couple of months. And it's certainly running nice and steadily now. So anyway, so that's just the way that you can, you know, use something like the MACD to identify stocks that might be, you know, doing something interesting. I think LNG is probably the, you know, one that I'd, I'd like to look of a bit better than most of these. But anyway, hope that video was useful to someone. Thank you very much.